Do not adjust yourself. <laughs> yes, this is me with the Moverio BT300 glasses. Do they look goofy? Do they look cool? I don't know, but they certainly look better than those big headsets you wear to fly FPV. Well, the reason these glasses are super cool and DJI loves them because DJI endorses them is because these are the gold standard for FPV drones. Mostly only work with DJI drones, but I'll show you later what other drones they work with. But for now, these things here are so cool because you can look through, just like a set of glasses, see what you see, see where your drone is, see what's going on. And if you refocus your eyes just for a split second, you'll actually see in high definition the image your drone sees. And you can actually operate all your camera functions with a touchpad. It's really cool. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about these glasses. The Moverio glasses consists of just two items. You have the actual glasses and you actually have the brains behind the glasses, which is an actual touchpad. So how do these work together and how does this whole system work? Well, I'm gonna explain it to you in really simple steps. Here we go. Okay, now everybody knows this is a tablet. It's actually an Android tablet and you have icons on it that you can select what you want. And one of the icons might be the DJI Go 4 app because you wanna go fly your drone. Well, that's great. You notice you have a screen and you have a touch screen. So what if you could take the screen off, place that in your glasses, but leave the tablet so you can touch it and select stuff? Well, guess what? That's the tablet that you touch and this is your screen. It's that simple. So what you're seeing now is me looking through the actual glasses. And yes, they're transparent because, well, they're glasses. That's what makes them so cool. Anyways, one little bit of disclosure is that I do not own these BT300 Moverio glasses. Epson contacted me, said, would you like to review these glasses? And I said, sure. So here we are reviewing them. So they sent me this review unit. So what I'm going to show you next is a quick unboxing of when I received the review unit. And you'll see all the components that come inside. Now I must note one thing. Since I was not the first guy to review these goggles and someone else or maybe two or three or five other people reviewed them before me, well, there's some pieces missing. You'll see in the unboxing that most components are there. The only reason I'm mentioning this is just in case you decide to buy this product in the future, you're probably gonna get more in the box than I got in the box. Then after the unboxing, I'm gonna show you all the physical features of the glasses and the touchpad. Then after that, I'm gonna show you the actual Android interface that you would see with the glasses on if you're just scrolling around, checking different things out because it works just like a tablet. And the interface is gonna look a lot like this, which is Android. This is the Moverio BT300 smart glasses sent to me by Epson. So what you have here is the case which would have your actual glasses. Looking inside we have the glasses right here and we have the nice little unit. This is your touchpad and your controls are here. They've included the instructions and in this box we have all the accessories. These here are accessories in case you're flying with a Phantom or some sort of controller device that requires the main unit to be held tightly. These here will help hold it tightly in the actual controller. Set of headphones in case you wanted to listen to the sound coming out. Not really required on DJI Mavics or Phantoms or anything like that. Nose piece in case you wear prescription glasses and it must connect the lenses over top of your glasses. These are actually a small set of plastic frames that you could take to your optometrist and have lenses put inside, prescription lenses for yourself. Then they would fit nicely with the Moverio FPV glasses. Here we have a dirty and used cleaning cloth. It's been well used, I can see. Here we have the sunshades that you can put over top of the glasses so you see the display better. There's an even darker sunshade inside. This one looks like it was never opened. Looks like a USB charging unit to charge up the device. All right, so now that I have everything unpacked out of the box, the box is empty. I'm going to charge these up and uh, try them out and give you a full review. I'll let you know what I think of them. You probably recognize this brand name, Epson. Not only do they make printers, but they also make projections that will project a display in a conference room, at a meeting, whatnot. Well, inside a projector, there's a tiny image that is sent out onto your screen. Well, guess what they did? They took that tiny image, it's right in here. They put two of them, one little projector here, one little projector there, and it sends out the image into this prism. There's a prism here and a prism there. Well, I call it a prism. I don't know if it's a real prism, but anyways, it bounces the light into the direction of your eyes. So the image you actually see with these glasses is high definition. It looks like you're looking at a massive TV screen. It is so clear that you can't even see the pixels. 
it's such a good image. And looking closely at the glasses, you can see there's really not much to them. So on one side of the glasses here, you have an actual camera. It takes a five megapixel picture and it can also take video. And this cable that comes off the glasses actually has a place where you can attach your headphones and you can clip this onto yourself. And at the very end of the cable, you have a special connector which plugs into the main brains of the unit, which would be this device right here. And this here just plugs into the bottom. So that's how your glasses get the power and they get the feed of the image. So this here unit is basically a tablet without a display. Your glasses are the display. Every Everything you would normally do on a tablet, you can do on this unit. If we look at the side of the unit, we see right here, we have a place to put the USB. That's where you charge it. And you can also attach a USB to go to your computer and to take files off of this here system. Here we have a micro SD card slot. This here button on the side is dedicated for the volume of the unit. You can turn the volume up and down if you're listening with the earbuds. And on this side, you have a very important button. When you're outside and you're looking at the image, if the image is not bright enough, you press this button to make the image brighter or less bright. And on the very top of the unit is the power button. Holding that down will turn the unit on. So if you're wondering how much weight are these glasses on my head, put the glasses on the actual weigh scale. So 113 grams total. I know the question on your mind is, what can I use these here Movario BT300 glasses with? What type of drone can I use them with? Well, you can use them with a Mavic Pro. You can use them with a Spark. You can use them with the Mavic Air. And you can actually use them with the Phantom Pro or the Phantom Advance. So as you can see, they work with all DJI drones, at least the most common drones, because the Movario BT300s work with the DJI Go and the DJI Go 4 app. Ah, but now you're wondering, what about other types of drones? Like maybe, how about a real FPV drone? Well, the answer to that is no, because an FPV drone, a real FPV race drone, does not operate with a tablet or a phone. So, nope. Those glasses will not work with this. And how about unique aviation? Can I use like maybe the Typhoon H with the Movario BT300s? Well, the answer is no, because DJI requires a tablet or a phone to function with their device. And the Movario, right over here, that takes the place of a tablet or a phone. So this here is an actual tablet. There's a tablet built right in here. So this is the tablet. So you can't have a tablet and another tablet. Okay, so it seems like it's mostly just DJI products that will work with the Movario BT300. Well, according to Epson, that is true. But what about these little toy drones? All these little toy drones all work by Wi-Fi and they use your phone or your tablet to function. And hey, hang on a sec. This is like a phone or a tablet, this little Movario device here. So the answer is yes, all these little toy drones will work with the Movario BT300. Of course, you'll never find the app to load into this device on the Movario website. You'll have to do something called sideloading the app. And if you're not sure how to sideload an app in Android, I'll put a little description below in the video explaining it in short. The next thing I'd like to quickly show you is how to attach this here touchpad to your controller. As you can see, it's an odd design, but I will say that if you have a Phantom 3 or a Phantom 4, then Epson includes these nice little white pieces of plastic, which will attach to your controller. But if you have the DJI Spark, the Mavic Air or the Mavic Pro, well, then you're kind of out of luck because this controller will not hold this here touchpad. You can try to stick it in as best you can, but it's not gonna work at all. You need some sort of device to fit in here, which is any type of phone or tablet holder like this. And here is the Movario BT300 in the actual Spark controller and it works the same for the Mavic Air and the Mavic Pro. You see it's just connected with these little pieces of white plastic, which into a holder that's similar to a Phantom 3 and Phantom 4. So here I'm doing a screen record of the Movario interface. So you can see I can move things with two fingers, left, right. It's just like a tablet. I can go up and down, do all sorts of things. Uh, there's even widgets like on a tablet, which I'm not sure why but uh, those are there. The only thing you have to be really concerned with is on your settings. That's where you'll set up your Wi-Fi for your Spark or anything that runs by Wi-Fi, anything else that you just connect with an OTG cable. You don't have to worry about that. You just go straight into your DJI Go 4 app and go fly and use your finger and move around here and do everything that you would normally do. Also on here, this is the camera that's actually on the glasses. So here I am looking at my computer. Um, looking at the box with the glasses came in. Here's my hand. Here's the actual Movario right here. Here's my spark. I'll get it behind that uh, tripod leg. And if I go up, there's the camera recording this. There's some pictures and all that good stuff. And if I go back to my little display here, I'm going to go and uh, let's go to the bottom here. I'm going to go and exit and go back to 
the home screen. You can add any apps here that you want through the Moverio store, which is this one right here. And also if you're flying and say you have this display in front of you, you can actually make the display go away just by touching the button at the top right here. It should disappear. Now I would just see what I'm looking at. And if I want the display to come back, just hit the button at the top and it should pop back on my screen. There we go. And that's pretty much it. It's basically a tablet that I'm viewing through my display. And I have to say, once again, the display looks like I've got an actual tablet right in front of me. It is so crystal clear. Now, to connect the Moverio to your Mavic controller or your Mavic Air controller, all you need to do is grab yourself your little USB cable or OTG cable, whichever one you have, and you just plug it in as such. So attach one end of the cable into the Moverio and attach the other end into your Mavic controller. And I should mention that this type of connection is identical if you have a Phantom. Now here I have the Spark controller, which is a bit different. You have a choice. You can either connect an OTG cable from the Spark controller all the way up to the Moverio touchpad, or you can just use the Wi-Fi in here and connect the Wi-Fi to the actual controller. And that's the method I usually prefer. Just remember that you set the Wi-Fi to the Spark controller by going into the settings app in the Android system. So the only negative I could see with this right now, just trying these glasses on out here in the bright sun, is if the sun is at a certain angle, it actually will come inside and catch you in the corner of your eye. Just like if you're wearing sunglasses and light is coming in the side, it becomes a, a problem. I've got a, a lanyard around my neck so I can hang on to this thing. And I've got my goofy hat on because it's freaking freezing out here. Let's move my mouse over. We're gonna have to fly. This lanyard is keeping this way up close to my head. So uh, here we go, we're recording. All right, so I can see, I'm gonna go up a little higher. I can see everything here. I'm just going to turn it face down to us. Here we have Camera Lady Nikki and uh, where am I? I'm back over here. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's take it out to the field. We'll take it up higher. Now the cool thing is, is I can look at it as it's up there, I see it perfectly, and I also see what it sees. So, this is pretty neat. So here I'm flying away. All right, so I'm gonna fly this straight out, and I'm gonna overlay to show you exactly what I see. And that's pretty much what it looks like, but you can see actually see right through the image. So as I see what the drone sees, I can actually see through that image. And uh, it's so cool, that I am going to go through these goalposts and uh, do a flight through the goalposts because I can actually see them quite well. So I'm moving towards the goalposts and uh, there we go, going through nice and slow, coming out the other side. I'll bring this back for a landing. Okay, so here's what I'll have to say. I should have had headphones on because I can't hear the ding and all the sounds like uh, GPS, home point recorded, all that stuff. I can see it in the screen, but I can't hear it, uh, which I'm used to hearing out of a tablet. So you probably do have to wear the headphones. That's the only thing I, I notice I'm missing. And when I select functions like record and whatnot, you might have to actually assign them to a button vice using the little pad here, because once again, when you select something, I can't even tell if I've selected it. I have to see it in the screen and then I know. So it takes a little bit more time. Other than that, I probably look like a total geek and uh, if I ever wanted to never populate the earth again with my species, I would just have to wear these. Other than that, I don't know. What do you think, uh, camera lady Nikki? Does it work? It works. <laughs> okay, good. With that said, I'm going to take these back indoors and they'll give you my final thoughts on these here Moverio glasses. All right, this is the part of the video where I come in the house, warm up, and give you my final thoughts on the Moverio BT300 FPV glasses. Let's start with aesthetics. Well, I'm going to compare them to the other goggles on the market, which are the DJI uh, goggles, which is that massive headset, that big ring that goes around your head, and that huge box that goes in front of your face. Those look ridiculous. Trust me, ask the ladies out there, those things look ridiculous if you're wearing them. But hey, they are very functional because they don't let light in, uh, you see a clear picture, 
They've actually got OcuSync and LightBridge built in, so they're pretty decent. These Moverio glasses do not have OcuSync and LightBridge built in because they're not designed to be that. These are designed to just be a phone or a tablet. So that means they have an operating system that I could install Netflix or Amazon movies and just sit in my house with the headphones on and listen to music or watch movies with these glasses on and it looks really cool. And like the DJI goggles, these also have a head tracking feature. So when you move your head left and right, you can have that correspond to something else to move left and right and up and down. In other words, you could almost use them as a virtual reality device. Now the Moverio glasses work with any DJI product that works with the DJI Go or the DJI Go 4 apps. Does it work with Litchi? Well, you'd have to sideload Litchi onto the actual device to make Litchi work. Now where these glasses reign supreme and no one can touch them is in government regulations. So if your country has drone regulations that state the drone operator must always keep the drone in sight at all times. Now there are no other FPV glasses on the market that I'm aware of that allow that function because these are the only glasses that let your eyes look right through the lens and it's almost like you're not wearing glasses. And when you want to see what the drone sees, you just look at the image of what the drone sees. Finally, in my short time of using this product, I only have two negatives that I noticed. One is that unlike the DJI goggles, since these sit away from your face, light will enter it. So if the sunlight is behind, it will bounce inside and reflect around and get in your eyes. So you have to turn your head a certain angle. Second item is the cable that comes off the glasses. It's a piece of cable that goes all the way to your touchpad. Well, that cable is really annoying. I wish it was wireless from the touchpad to the glasses because if you set your controller down on the ground and you forget to take your glasses off, the glasses will go flying to the ground. That's why you saw in the video that I had a lanyard around my controller to keep it around my neck. That was to stop me from setting my controller on the ground and having these going flying off. How do I know that? Yes, I've done it before. And finally, I have to talk about the image. The image is really, really good. It's crystal clear, super clear indoors. And when I was outdoors, I was kind of worried that I wouldn't see anything, especially because there was snow and a bright blue sky. And if you've ever tried to shine a projector in a conference room on a white wall, and then you turn all the lights on, you really don't see much. So outdoors, the lights are on, so, and everything's white. Uh, it makes it difficult for the image to reflect back into your eyes. However, I had one of the medium level sunshades on the front of the glasses and that assisted quite a bit. And there was one more level I could have put, which was much darker, and that would have made the image even brighter. So that sums up my review. I'm gonna put a link in the description of where you can buy these glasses in the US or in Canada. They may not have the best prices shown because I'm just picking links like Amazon and Epson. I'm sure you can find these at other retailers at a really good discounted price. So if someone finds them at a discounted price, please post the link below so that we can all save money. All right, that sums up this review video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and we'll see you in the next video. Many more drone reviews coming.